Okay, hello. Uh, this will be the third tutorial uh, focused on frequency domain. So using Abacus, it's possible to uh, assemble a, a mechanical system and um, study the modes of vibration of that system uh, in a frequency domain. Uh, so to do a simple frequency domain simulation, you first need to have a geometry. So when you open Abacus, you start by drawing a specific geometry. You need to have the vibration for. So we'll try just a simple uh, prism. And that, for that prism, we'll fix the base and see what frequencies we will we could get. Uh, first, we draw the geometry. So we start with the part. And I've showed this in the previous tutorials, so I'm going to quickly put in some random values and move forward. Uh, but I'm also showing it step by step, just to give you an idea again. So we have the part, and then we add the material, so it's a random material. And I'll put quite some random values for that. Uh, but for frequency domain, if you want a body to vibrate, uh, you at least need to have some property for elasticity, and that's the minimum requirement. Uh, again, these are random values, but close to some real values of metals. Uh, so we're going to fix this part in the bottom and this side. And then we would see what kind of vibrations we get on the loose end, on the free end. And it's expected to vibrate you know, up and down, left and right, and on, on other directions. So now we have the property. I'm going to assign a section for it. And it's going to be one random, all random. And this part will have a section for mat one. I'm going quick through this phase because I want to explain more on what's more important. We have the prism in the assembly. And now the important part, where I'll slow down a bit. It's going to be in the step. So I'll create the step. Uh, to go to the frequency, it's here in the linear perturbations. And the basic default is first frequency. But you cannot start with the simulation of frequency directly, because you need to uh, have uh, boundary conditions. And the boundary conditions. Uh, you need to establish them in a general step and a static step. So you start with a static step where you put where your part is fixed. You could assign a force value, a pressure value, any other values that could influence this vibration. So you, you have to start with an initial, which is always default, and then a static where you assign the boundary conditions. And then you move on to a next step with linear perturbation. So I just create a regular static. I always reduce this uh, the increment size for the beginning of it just to uh, avoid any errors or big steps so now we added this step one I forgot to rename it so I can just edit right click on this rename it and I'll call it static BC so boundary conditions and then I'll add another step again so now we have static BC, and now I'll go to linear perturbation and add the frequency one. So when I add the frequency one, of course, I have a big menu of options. And there are different types of solvers to extract those frequencies. So the default is Lang Langsos. Uh, you can go to the manuals and read details what are the differences among those. For a very simple setup, Langsos is always OK. For more complicated assemblies or interactions, subspace could be more useful or AMS. Uh, if I let this run as it is, uh, it will extract all the frequencies. And, and some bodies have infinite range of frequencies because it's a multiplication of, of, of frequencies. So it's better to limit it to a value. So if I type in 10, then the software will extract the first 10 major frequencies. So uh, it will start with the frequencies with the higher amplitudes or highest resonance amplitudes. And it will give me the first 10 of that list. And this gives you like the most important ones to begin with. For a complicated assembly and a complicated system, you could use the SIM-based linear dynamics procedure. In this case, you will have more interaction between parts. You'll have damping effects. For now, I'm not going into more advanced damping effects. 
Uh, you could always simulate frequency for uh, just boxes that are stacked above each other, and then you need to specify the friction between the boxes, the interaction, the weights of the boxes, and stuff like that. And in that case, you could add those effects for damping and for interactions. So for now, I'm just going to add value 10 to limit how, may, how, how much information we get from this. And you can even remove this acoustic structural coupling. This is also for more complicated assemblies. Uh, and it's uh, related to some also resonance effect between several parts. So only we have only one part, so I'll keep it as basic as possible for one part. The rest is not needed. Uh, and the other is also additional information you could use. But, uh, so these are for calculation to limit or control the calculation. And these are a bit advanced things you could read about. Uh, now I'll just stick to this option. So here I have this step two that I didn't rename again. So I'll rename and call it Freck. So now I have the static and the frequency. I didn't add any uh, boundary conditions, so I need to fix this part on the bottom. Because if you have a free part without any fixed edge, you wouldn't have much vibrations or, or you will have some normal modes. So it's better to have, it's, it's more interesting if you fix the end. So I'll call this fix. It's the, I'm going to use the encastre. So I'll select one surface and encast. And now I have this edge fixed, so the vibration will happen on the loose end, on the free end. And that's it. I just need to mesh the part. And again, I need to switch to part meshing. Apply default. I don't need to really improve too much the mesh now. And I just need to go to job and create the job. And I call it Frick. Leave it almost by default, almost everything as it is. It's a very simple setup. And submit. And now that it is running, I can check the monitor. And here I can see that the analysis uh, is running. And it's already uh, finished one analysis preparation, which is the static before the frequency. And still running. Now I have a status file. I got results. And here you can see there's step one, which is the static. There are six steps. We got to one second. And then there's the step two, which is the frequency. And it's just always one step and extracts these frequencies. So now I can go dismiss, right click, and or I can go to uh, results. And then this is the result. I just need to click on the plot contour. Then I can see some deformation. You can see the part is bending. You can go here, uh, choose the speed of animation, and just click on this one, which is animate. And then you can see the vibration. To see the other uh, modes of vibration, you go to results here. And you see steps, frames. And you have those 10 modes of vibration that we extracted. So you click on the next one. You click apply. Then you can see the next one. Click on the third, and you can see the twist. I click on the fourth, so you can see another mode of bending. So this is like the dual harmonic, the other mode of bending. And you can see some along the length of vibration. Of course, the deformation you see here is exaggerated. And you can also adjust that deformation just by going to this uh, component options. And you can choose a uh, uniform value, and you can set it to one, which is the real value. In that case, you'll have more realistic deformations. And that's it for today.